This individual is one that comes to the point where they feel that they're justified by their own efforts. Glory to God. I've met them over the last 60 something plus years that I've been in it. Justified by their own efforts. I don't do this, I don't do that, I don't. You're still a sinner. Jew, yes. Gentile, Muslim, Seventh day Adventist, Mormon, you're still a sinner. Yes. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, how can I come into justification? Now, God gave Moses the oracles. God gave Abram a circumcision 14 years after God made a covenant with Abraham. And God gave the law to Moses and said that once a year you're going to offer a special Passover lamb. You're going to shed that blood. And whenever you shed that blood for a whole year, you can go out and enjoy the fact that you're freed from condemnation for a whole year. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, if we could for a whole year say that, that it had been paid for, the lamb had been slain, the scapegoat had been let out into the wilderness, and for a whole year we're justified. By faith, they offered up the lamb on the altar. Not through faith, but by faith. They were looking forward. Amen? Amen. Now, if we have a prophet, if we're profited uh, by our oracles from God. Now, uh, there was an argument, strong argument in the early church uh, that was arguing over works and grace. Now, Paul has been very plain here when he said in the ninth verse, there is none righteous, no, not one. You don't want so many church people tell them they're not righteous. Hello, amen. I, I mean, they'll tell you, I don't do this, I don't do that, and I don't do this. I'm not preaching you go out here and live like the devil and live in sin and wallow in the hog pen. That's not what I'm saying. God doesn't want you to do that. God wants you to be up to the place to work that you enjoy the fullness of this life and the world to come. Yes. He is not going to rob you of that which he has promised you. The thief has come, but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. How many church people, how many religious people are robbing themselves because they neglect to understand what they claim to believe in. They fail to understand, they fail to comprehend what they claim to believe in. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Amen. Oh, I, I, I don't. Jesus paid it all, all. To him I owe, oh, well, Lord, if, if, if I get a chance, I'll worship you. If I get a chance, I'll, I'll go chant at a church at least four times a year because they feed that four different times. Hello. Yes. Amen. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm talking to the choir this morning. I'm talking to the very root of this church. I'm talking to the very basics of this church. Glory to God. The rest of them are not here today. Hello. Amen. But the difference between the believer, and the religious individual. Now listen to what the Bible said in the 21st chapter, in the 20, I mean 21st verse of the third chapter. But now the righteousness of God <coughs> without the law is manifest, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. See, one of our big problems today, we, we've got all these uh, religious individuals that are uh, on television, radio, and going across the country raising millions of dollars because of the ignorance of religious people. Glory to God. God not in the mystic business. He's not in the mysticism. He's in the promising you something. And if you believe what he has promised, 
Glory to God. Now, whenever he said here, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested being witnessed by the law and the prophets. The law and the prophets are witnessing that righteousness is without the law. Glory to God. In other words, that Hebrews 11, they talk about looking forward. By faith, they look for something to happen. By faith, they look for something to take place. Glory to God. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all, and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's not any difference. Amen. Now, now we make a great difference, but the Bible said there's not any difference because we're all sinners. What does it mean it, that says that we're all sinners? <coughs> the term sin means missing the mark. We've all missed the mark. We, we were born after the first man, Adam. And because of Adam's disobedience, it brought sin and condemnation upon the human family. But God, through his oracles and through his prophets, uh, Declared unto them, if you will do these things, then you will find justification for one year. Leviticus, the 16th chapter, and the 14th verse. Leviticus, the 16th chapter. Yeah, I'll get my fingers to work in a minute. <clears throat> Leviticus, the 16th chapter. I said that before, didn't I? In the 14th verse. And he shall take of the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with a finger upon the mercy seat eastward and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Then shall he kill the goat of the sin offering that is for the people and bring his blood within the veil and do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it upon the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. And he shall make an atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanliness of the children of Israel and because of their transgression and all their sins. And he shall, and, uh, shall he do for the tabernacle of the congregation <coughs> that remaineth among them in the midst of them. 